AMD CEO Dr. Lisa Su addressing CNBC just after the company released its Q1 earnings. Despite significant regulatory headwinds, including U.S. export restrictions on AI chips to China, AMD delivered a strong quarter. But what do these numbers really mean for AMD's long-term growth? Should investors be bullish? And how is AMD positioning itself in the face of growing pressure from rivals like NVIDIA and Intel? But first, let's play the interview a bit before returning to the mainstream. It's wonderful to be here with you. Good morning, guys. Um, we mentioned this number that you put on the restriction effect. Um, how'd you, how, do you, how do you get to the number and how do you think that, what's the trajectory of that figure as we go forward? Well, Carl, let me start with first, you know, we reported um, a great first quarter. I think we saw strength in um, across all of our businesses. We saw strength in our uh, client and gaming um, segments. We saw strength o overall in our data center segment. And I think that just goes to you know the foundation of our business, which is you know really on uh, high performance computing. Now, to your question, as it re relates to some of the um, China uh, export controls that came out, um, earlier in April, uh, I would say that, you know, it is a headwind in our business. Uh, we said it was a $700 million uh, reduction in revenue for the second quarter and one and a half billion for the full year. But even within that backdrop, what we see is an environment which is very, very favorable to our product cycles and all of the great uh, technology that we have coming out in 2025. So we still see the opportunity to grow strong double digits in uh, 2025. And, you know, that is really on the strength of the overall portfolio that we have. So we're breaking down AMD's Q1 earnings in detail, including key takeaways from Dr. Sue's interview their AI chip strategy, the China export impact, and what it all means for investors and the semiconductor industry at large. But here are the key takeaways investments in data center and AI, particularly with 5th Gen EPYC and new MI series, drive growth and strengthen revenue and margins. Strategic acquisitions and partnerships enhance AI solutions and market presence, boosting revenue and market share across segments. Tariffs, export controls, and rising operating expenses challenge AMD's international market revenue, while inventory and competitive pressures threaten net margins and market share in AI. A quick one, friend. If you found this breakdown helpful, hit the like button and subscribe for more market and earnings analysis videos. Got questions? Drop a comment below. Let's start with the numbers. For Q1 2025, AMD beat Wall Street expectations. Revenue topped $5.5 billion with strong year-over-year -year growth in the data center segment. Net income rose as well, signaling efficient cost management despite a still volatile macro environment. After Advanced Micro Devices, AMD, said it expects a $1.5 billion hit to revenue this year due to tightening restrictions on its sales to China, UBS analysts warned rival NVIDIA faces the same headwinds. Advanced Micro Devices showcased a notable 15% price increase over the past month, in line with impressive first-quarter earnings that exceeded Wall Street's expectations amid strong AI-related demand. The company reported a robust increase in revenue and net income, further supported by optimistic guidance for the upcoming quarter. Amid a mixed market environment with broader indexes showing slight variances due to tariff news and Fed decisions, AMD's solid performance and ongoing advancements in AI and new product releases likely added weight to its upward trajectory contrasting the flat performance of some other companies. The recent news driving Advanced Micro Devices' 15% share price increase is likely to bolster perceptions surrounding its AI potential, as highlighted in the narrative. The MI350 series and EPYC processors are expected to invigorate data center revenue, aligning with the company's recent earnings beat. The impact on revenue forecasts is noteworthy, as analysts anticipate AMD's revenue to grow by 10.2% annually over the next three years, despite certain market headwinds. Meanwhile, increased investments in AI suggest sustained earnings growth, though potential price pressures may affect profit margins. AMD's shares delivered an 83.44% total return over five years, providing a robust context for evaluating its recent 15% rise. This longer-term growth contrasts with a one-year underperformance against the broader U.S. market and the U.S. semiconductor industry, which posted gains of 7.2% and 8.8%, respectively, over the same period. Such historical performance underscores AMD's capacity to rebound, supported by AI developments and strategic partnerships. In relation to analyst expectations, AMD's current share price remains at a discount of around 35.85% to the consensus price target of $133.98.
The favorable guidance and improved market positioning through new product developments give credence to revised upward forecasts, with the price target offering a potentially optimistic outlook relative to its past stock performance. However, maintaining cautious optimism is essential due to identified risks, such as over-reliance on the data center segment, which comprises half of AMD's annual revenue. AMD's anticipated revenue hit is bigger than we expected and over a shorter period of time than we would have thought. Data center revenue, up 80% year over year, thanks largely to growing demand for AMD's EPYC server chips. Client segment, PCs, seeing a resurgence due to AI-enabled PCs and strong product refresh cycles. Gaming and embedded segments, stable, but less of a growth driver this quarter. It's clear AMD's strength this quarter came from two major forces, its deepening foothold in AI and enterprise cloud, and a growing interest in AI-powered PCs by consumers and enterprises alike. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room, export controls. In April, the U.S. imposed tighter restrictions on advanced AI chip exports to China. AMD says that cost them $700 million in Q2 revenue alone, and they expect a total $1.5 billion hit by the end of the fiscal year. Despite this, AMD is maintaining a strong outlook. That tells us something critical. Demand for their non-China offerings is growing fast enough to offset geopolitical risk. As Lisa Su said, the company sees double-digit growth into 2025, even with those export restrictions. AI remains AMD's biggest long-term bet, and in Q1, we saw it begin to pay off. Their MI300X GPU is gaining traction, especially in hyperscale data centers looking for alternatives to NVIDIA. Microsoft, Meta, and Oracle have all indicated interest in AMD's AI GPUs. AMD's AI GPU business is on track for a projected 4BI revenue in 2024, and rising. One of AMD's core strengths here is flexibility. Their GPUs are open, meaning companies can customize AI frameworks more easily. That's a direct contrast to NVIDIA's vertically integrated approach. As Sue noted, we are still in the early stages of AI infrastructure growth. The market is huge and fast moving. AMD isn't trying to beat NVIDIA at its own game. It's carving out a different lane that's more open and partner friendly. Let's put this in context. NVIDIA remains the dominant player in AI GPUs, controlling an estimated 80 to 90% of the market. But cracks are forming. Companies want alternatives, and AMD is the most credible option. Intel, on the other hand, continues to struggle. Their foundry ambitions and AI chip rollout have been marred by delays and inconsistent execution. Lisa Su was tactful during the interview when asked about Intel, but make no mistake, AMD is eating their lunch in both server CPUs and AI. Every major cloud provider, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, is now using AMD EPIX chips, and in the enterprise space, adoption is rising among Forbes Global 2000 firms. AMD's value proposition is clear, better performance per watt, lower total cost of ownership. Another theme from the interview? Agility. Lisa Su emphasized AMD's ability to quickly respond to supply chain changes and geopolitical shifts. That includes reshoring manufacturing to the U.S. and building more flexible logistics chains. Yes, sectoral tariffs could be coming. Yes, it's a risk. But AMD is positioning itself to manage that, whether through geographic diversification, forward planning, or leveraging its strong balance sheet. So, what's Wall Street thinking? Most analysts remain bullish. After earnings, price targets were raised by several firms. Why? Because AMD is demonstrating consistent execution, product innovation, and adaptability, even in a tough macro environment. Jeffries called AMD's AI story underappreciated. Morgan Stanley highlighted AMD's expanding data center share. Barclays raised its price target, citing accelerating AI momentum. To be clear, AMD's stock is still volatile, but it's arguably one of the most well-positioned semiconductor firms for the next 5 to 10 years, especially if it continues delivering on its roadmap and deepening its AI and enterprise routes. Looking ahead, here's what investors and observers should keep an eye on. MI300X adoption. Will major cloud partners expand deployments? AI PC launch cycle. Can AMD capitalize on the next-gen consumer refresh? China-US regulatory dynamics. Any easing or further tightening of export controls? Manufacturing strategy. How quickly can AMD scale domestic production? Competitor responses. Will Intel rebound? Will NVIDIA feel pressure? If AMD continues gaining share in AI, cloud, and enterprise, we may look back at Q1 2025 as a turning point, not just a beat, but the beginning of a breakout. 
What is driving this perspective? AMD's significant investments in expanding their data center and AI capabilities are expected to drive strong future growth, particularly with the ramp-up of their 5th-gen EPI Turin processors and the upcoming launch of the MI350 and MI400 series. These investments are poised to enhance revenue and gross margins due to high demand from hyperscalers and enterprises. The shift towards high-end Ryzen and EPIA processors, along with increased AI capabilities, is driving higher average selling prices, ASPs, and improved product mix, thereby enhancing net margins and operating income. AMD's acquisition of ZT Systems boosts their ability to offer comprehensive rack-scale AI solutions, potentially accelerating deployment times for hyperscalers. This positions them for increased revenue from the growing demand for AI infrastructure. Strong momentum in the client and gaming segments, driven by high demand for Ryzen processors and Radeon graphics, is likely to result in continued revenue growth and increased market share, further supporting earnings growth. AMD's strategic partnerships and increasing presence in the commercial PC market are expected to capture more market share and drive revenue. The focus on low core count and high-end models in the CPU market is likely to improve net margins. To wrap it up, AMD is facing headwinds, no doubt. Export restrictions, tariff uncertainty, fierce competition. But what we saw in Q1 was resilience, innovation, and long-term focus. Lisa Su and her team are not just navigating the storm, they're building a ship that's meant to last. If you found this breakdown helpful, hit the like button and subscribe for more tech stock and earnings analysis videos. Got questions or want a video comparing AMD versus Nvidia? Drop a comment below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.